All right, so here is the factory flare uh, right here. This is on the 3 8 copper tubing, and you can see right there, there's kind of a little indentation, and then it almost looks like this is all kind of scratched. Anyway, um, it's not the greatest flare. Some of the flares I've been practicing with have, been, have turned out better than that. Today, I'm going to show you what I've learned from flaring my own mini split heat pump tubing. Step one, use a pipe cutter to cut the tubing. Start by making sure the roller wheels and cutting wheel are in contact with the tubing, but without too much pressure. If you use too much pressure, you'll deform the tubing, which will make for a bad flare. Apply a quarter turn every rotation or so to maintain the light pressure. It's getting close, I can tell, I can feel it. I was probably being overly cautious here, but because these flares were being installed on a system that constantly operates at hundreds of PSI, I was really taking my time and being cautious not to deform the tubing. Come on, baby. Close. And there she goes. All right, we're gonna take our deburring tool. <clears throat> and I'm gonna make sure that I'm angling the pipe downward so that the burrs are falling downwards out of the pipe. And I'm gonna use this deburring tool right here that's got uh, kind of a pyramid shape. And that prevents it versus this deburring tool uh, basically because this deburring tool can scratch the inside of the tube. And because of the angles of these blades, it, they're not going to be able to scratch the inside of the tube. I borrowed this eccentric 45 degree angle flaring tool from a friend. I found it made great flares and was not difficult to use. Because the tool's cone is eccentric, it is only coming in contact with the tubing a little bit at a time. This reduces the friction and produces a rolling action that supposedly makes a smoother and more uniform flare. At this point, don't forget to put the nut on or you'll have to start over. I ended up doing this a couple of times. For some reason, it is really easy to forget. Then put the clamp, or whatever this thing is called, onto the tubing. Make sure you face the side with the beveled edge out where the flare will end up being. Make sure you leave enough tubing sticking out, roughly 1 8 of an inch, to properly fill the space inside the flare nut. I ended up practicing on both my 3 8 inch line and the 5 8 inch line to find the perfect amount, and it did seem to be a little bit different for larger and smaller lines. Nylog, this is just as a lubricant. Some people, I don't know, I've seen all kinds of things that say not to use this. I feel like as somewhat of a beginner at flaring and making connections, it's a good idea to use just a little bit of Nylog. Okay, so this is gonna slide over the way this eccentric tool works. There's little grooves here and this is gonna lock in. Now I'm going to watch that cone come in. There you go, you can see it come in. And we're just going to start tightening. And the other nice thing about the eccentric tool is it's a little bit less pressure because it's only working on one side of the tubing on, at a time versus a concentric. And then when you finish, this tool is going to give us a pop. There it goes. So when it pops like that, that means that's enough. Okay. So we're going to start backing it off. Back it all the way out. Take that off. And there we 
we go. There's the new flare. Oh shit. <laughs> I forgot to put the fitting on. Had a uh, perfect flare right there, but of course I forgot to put the uh, flare fitting above it, so. And that fills out most of the space inside. So what you're looking for is for this flare to be able to pass through the threads, but take up most of that space inside there. All right, so here's the one I finally ended up setting on keeping. And the major difference here is you can tell with that flare, that flange fits just inside the threads. And that's the main reason I decided to keep this one. So when you pull it all the way back, it does fit nicely. If you have any questions, post them below. And if you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button or give it a like.